Signing up for your marketing mindset. My name is Ray Malaski. I'm the founder of Get Cleaning Clicks. And I thought this was a great opportunity to talk about something that not many people talk about. And even marketers today, they don't even realize it. So this really goes back to the basics to square one. You're starting your business. I want to grow it. I want to get my market share. So how do I do that? I put this together. Uh, it's about 14 pages and you guys will be able to download, download this after the webinar. It's how to set a real marketing strategy with real numbers to achieve growth in your cleaning business to 1 million and beyond. Bear with me here. Who I am, my name is Ray Malaski. Some of you may or may not know who I am. Um, I've been in the Facebook groups. I've been in LinkedIn. I've been a member of the ARCSI for many years. I ran our cleaning business, Maids in a Minute. Um, really, Maids in a Minute was, we had an old brand. We changed it to Maids in a Minute. But uh, when I sold it, we ran Maids in a Minute for three years, but I had a total of seven years in the maid service industry. So this was, I was just like a lot of you guys where I woke up every day, and I was struggling to make a profit and I was struggling to hire cleaners and I was building this brand and it was all a learning curve through those seven years. So what, after I sold it and I started Get Cleaning Clicks, um, I've really been able to put in perspective um, what works, what doesn't. I learned this through my maid service. I learned this through helping friends. And then later on when I started my company, I learned it by helping other cleaning business owners and we we've helped hundreds of them and several of them have went from the low 250s to the high 1 millions and and beyond that so uh, I wanted to take what I learned through all those years kind of put it together for step one of you guys and and that's what this is about so get cleaning clicks is my marketing company we specialize in helping cleaning services grow their market share, brand their business, and and get uh, lead generation for their company. Um, what I have found while working with hundreds of cleaning business owners over the past years is that there's a big difference in how they look at their marketing. What is their vision? Um, how do they see it? And, and I want to put this in perspective because I know a lot of you guys are starting out. Some of you may be in higher revenue numbers, so this may be... Um, somewhat eye-opening to you when you when you see what I have to say here. And this is there there's really one thing that uh most successful cleaning companies understand. And now you're gonna understand that as well. So mark marketing mindset number one, your marketing budget. You have to have a budget. You have to have a budget. Now, uh, I see people in the groups, they're talking about, um, you know, uh, where, where do I go to get customers? And, and really, I mean, especially early on, customers aren't the hardest thing to get. What the hardest thing to get is good cleaners. But being able to scale that system and put your time and energy into building those cleaners and making your customers raving fans is where you guys should be at. You shouldn't be working in Facebook groups and, and doing networking. Your time should be spent in your business, perfecting your process and making your, your customers go wow when they're done clean. And, and if you can do that, you're going to have a better return on your investment when it comes to marketing. But have a marketing budget. This marketing budget is a percentage of revenue, typically seven to eight percent if you're under five million, according to the Small Business Association, and is spent spent on a blend of lead generation and branding all in one. Now, I'm going to go into lead generation and branding, but to give you an idea, so this is a little infographic that we put together, and I'll try to zoom in here for you. Here we go. So here's your annual budget and annual revenue, monthly budget, monthly revenue. If you're doing 100,000 in revenue in your cleaning business, which would be, you know, basically um, just starting, 
you have a seven to eight thousand dollar marketing budget a year. That's five hundred and eighty three dollars to six hundred and sixty seven. That's if you go by these guidelines. I, I've I've had startups that you know spent twenty percent of revenue because they understood you know after the first year they weren't worried about making a profit. They just wanted to get out there and really start to brand their company and and bring in customers. And that's really up to you. But again, this is a uh, suggestion from the Small Business uh, Administration. 78% of gross revenue is what you need to dedicate to your marketing. That doesn't give you a ton of room for quick growth. But just understand, you'll get there. Because if you're doing an amazing job cleaning houses, referrals will help you grow alone. I've talked to some cleaning business owners that do a half a million dollars, never market, but they do a wonderful job at cleaning. So the referrals have just really compacted their, their business. But, uh, you know, if you ever want to exit and sell, you got to have a scalable system. And, and that starts with, with marketing and picking the right company as well. I've also had customers who would say, you know what? I got to cut back my budget. I just, you know, I'm just not seeing the return. And and every time somebody says that to me, it goes back to um, Henry Ford's quote, a man who stops advertising to save money is like a man who stops a clock to save time. And that's exactly the truth. Uh, it even remains true in today's digital landscape. The idea has never changed just where your marketing has. And I'm going to go through that and explain it to you a little bit more as we go through. Mindset number two, your branding and lead generation. So let's just recap this real quick. Seven to 8% of your revenue is spent on lead generation and branding. So what does that mean? Lead generation obviously is bringing in leads, right? It's capturing the percentage of your market that needs your service now and you are solving an immediate problem for. I wake up tomorrow, my house is a wreck, my wife had a party, I need, I need somebody. That's lead generation. I'm going to call somebody. I'm going to book them regardless, uh, whether it's your company or one of the other three that I call. Now, branding is getting your name out there so that you are capturing the remaining percentage of your market when they are ready to purchase your service for you. Your holistic marketing goal is to get everybody, every one of your ideal potential clients out there to know, like, and trust you. Uh, Legion is only solving a small part of this equation, but together with Legion and branding, they complete the buyer's journey. Anyone ever Google house cleaning near me? You ever just go to the browser and type it or house cleaning in my city? You will always see a Molly Maids ad. You will always see a Mary Maids ad. Why is that? Because because they understand the power of branding and lead generation. <laughs> uh, do they return? Do they get a return on that investment? You know, I surely hope so. Most of our customers do. Um, it's very rare that we ever have an, uh, a situation where they're not. But, you know, sometimes in the smaller markets, it's harder. The larger markets are actually easier to grow a business, at least for us from a marketing standpoint. Um, but they're always advertising. I mean, 12 o'clock at night, one o'clock in the morning, their ads are showing. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, their ads are showing. And they understand the power that it brings to keep their name out there. Uh, when we started our company, it was called Missy's Maids. You know, it starts with an M, has maids on the end. It's kind of similar. We used to get calls all the time. Hey, is this Molly Maids? No, this is Missy's Maids, but we do the same thing. Can I help you? You know, and uh, of course, oh, no, no, I have, I've got a cleaning scheduled with them. Oh, okay, great. Well, if you need anything, let us know. We're here for you. You know, uh, that's because they built this powerful brand. And it's also why they can franchise it out because it's so powerful. They can enter a market. And just the brand awareness of that name shows trust to these customers because they've seen them before. Maybe they lived in Michigan and they moved to Louisiana. Uh, there was one there. And now there's one where they live now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I've seen that name. So that that's the power of branding. 
there, there's a couple articles here that I found that really support what we're talking about too. Um, and there's a link in, in this PDF, which again, you'll be able to download when we're done. Um, so Forbes, this article here, it talks about how brands are valuable. Many, and this is just a snippet of it, you know, what I thought was important for this, for this uh, uh, summit. So many companies put the value of their brand on their balance sheet. And I don't know if a lot of you guys know accounting, but a balance sheet is how much your company is worth. So, so think about this for a minute. They put their brand on their balance sheet. So their brand has a dollar value, their brand, their company name, logo, website, all this stuff has a dollar value. And it really should be on your balance sheet, in my opinion. I mean, if you paid $5,000 for a beautiful website and that thing's generating you money, that's your, that's your brand right there. That's a lead generation machine. It's a tool. It's an asset to your company and it has a value. And it's a lot different if you have a Wix site that barely produces anything that's barely getting any traffic to if you have a beautiful custom site that truly represents your brand and you've got mega traffic going to it and you're converting this traffic. So, so there, there's the difference between having a site that isn't worth anything and a site that's worth something. It's building your brand and it's making that balance sheet larger on the better that it does. Um, it goes into how several examples of how Bill Gates and others purchase brands with zero assets for billions of dollars. So they, they just wanted the name and the domain basically just because they did such a good name of branding. And it, it'll give you some examples of those companies in there. And then there's another article from Entrepreneur. Uh, it tells how brands build trust with their audience and much more. There's a, there's a ton of things that uh, it goes into uh, why branding is important and how it affects your business. Again, it's solving the buyer's journey with the know, like, and trust you factors of your brand. And I could go on forever about why branding is important, but I hope that you guys are really kind of seeing what I'm saying about branding and, and why branding is different than lead generation. But, you know, at the same time, it can be one and the same. Mindset number three, your KPIs in knowing your market. This was like an eye opener for me when I figured this out. And, you know, just like in the maid service, I'd wake up every day, I'd get in these Facebook groups, I'd, I'd talk to other business owners. What are you guys doing? How is this working? Um, you know, any tips on your policies and procedures manual, things like that. I, I do the same for marketing. So I'm digging in, I'm talking with other marketers, I'm watching videos and, and I'm constantly educating myself. And, and when I, when I figured this out, it like a, a light bulb went off and I'm like, oh my gosh, tangible numbers to what I'm doing. Like, you know, you're just saying, Hey, I'm marketing. And what does that mean? I'm trying to get more business to grow my business, but how much business are you trying to get? How many customers do you need? How many people are available to purchase your services in your area? So start with numbers and set a realistic expectation. So you can use uh, Wikipedia or census.gov and you can, uh, you can look in your market and get an idea of how many people. And I'll tell you the percentage that you got to look for here. So this will at least give you something to start with. Just like your policies and procedures manual, you will also be working and updating this number as new data comes because some of this data could be two years old and you know that your area or your city has grown. So, so it's probably more than what, what's reported. Um, but at least it'll give you a good starting point. You'll have something tangible. So for Lapeer County, that's, that's where I live. That's where I started my maid service. I wish I'd have known this seven years ago. I would have started it somewhere else initially, but um, let's say you have a population of 160,000 like we have here in Lapeer County. For the cleaning industry, 10% of the, that market is, is going to use a cleaning service. 
so 10 percent of 160,000 people so wh what's that tell me so i i've got 16,000 customers that could potentially be mine and that that may seem i don't know if that seems like a big number to you but in in reality that's teeny this is a micro market this is one of those itsy bitsy small markets that nobody even tries to get into because it's there's just not enough volume there um However, there is enough volume there. Um, it's going to take you longer because there aren't the masses looking for the service in the area. And it may even take some local branding, but, um, but you can still get there because this actually supports about $2.5 million cleaning services. So, so two and a half, $1 million cleaning services is, could service this area. 1600 is in a large market, like I said, but it only takes 300 reoccurring clients to hit that $1 million mark in revenue. So 300 customers using your service, reoccurring, you're hitting 1 million in revenue. I know a large portion of that's going to be one times and, you know, you really should have a, a system in place to work those into reoccurring. And if you're working hard on that quality and you're training those technicians and your service is really wowing those customers, it sure makes it easier to convert one time into recurring. So 300 is that mark, give or take, you know, it really depends on your pricing, your market, but, but, you know, you can definitely use that. So in this example, say 50% of those are one time, 50% are recurring in the population with 160K can support two and a half separate $1 million cleaning companies. So you now have 800 people looking for recurring and 800 people looking for one-time cleaning companies. Th these are guesstimates, you know, uh, you can kind of tell when you answer the phone, how many people want recurring, how many people want one time. I know a lot of times the one time people say they want one time, but they really want recurring, but they're just testing your services to see how good you are. And then here's a little tip that I have for you. You can get a deeper look inside of the statistics to look at how many home sales are out there each month. And then you can calculate what your target market is for move in and move out cleanings and how you're going to address that one. Mindset number four, your KPIs, calculate lifetime value. Okay. <sighs> You may have these numbers now, or you may have to figure them out as you're going. The key here is figure it out. If you're spending X amount of dollars on marketing and you generate 15 leads for reoccurring services and you're closing 50% of those, you can now have a hard number to understand how much revenue you've generated for your company. So how much is a one-time cleaning worth to you and how much is a reoccur reoccurring cleaning worth to you? This helps with a few things. So sales, it tells you how much of potential revenue you have generated in any given day, week, month, or year, or so on. You can figure out if you must improve the quality in your services if the lifetime reoccurring for a client isn't 12 months now this isn't for everybody because you could be in one of those places where it's kind of transient you got people coming in people going out so maybe that cycle is six months but the key is to know what it is for you and to know what it is for your market and then that will help you understand do i need to improve in sales or do i need to improve in my cleaning because really both of those are are just as important to your business if if one times are not converting into reoccurring or purchasing more than once in a 12 month period chances are you've got some quality issues to fix in your cleaning business so i i don't know about you but a large i'd say probably 30 percent of the customers that we had they would call like before every holiday or you know uh sometimes after every holiday special occasions that thing so 
So some of these customers would purchase six to 10 times with us a year, um, just as a one-time clean, even though they're not technically a reoccurring customer, they're coming back to you. So how many of those people are coming back to you and how much is that worth to you? Um, and then the simple math on figuring this number, uh, you can do a lump sum. So take uh, the number of all your clients and divide them by total revenue generated over the year. And that will tell you regardless whether it's a reoccurring one time how much one customer is worth to you now i like to break that down by one time and reoccurring because obviously the reoccurring is what everybody wants but you still want one times because reoccurrings come from one times especially when your service is amazing and if you're starting up and you don't have these numbers you just start with this one times worth about 420 each, assuming that over the lump sum purchase more than once with you, at least twice. Um, and then reoccurrings, a biweekly at 150, actually comes out to be about 3,700, but let's just say 3,500. So those are two hard numbers that you can start tracking with and use as a benchmark against your business and what's going on. And why does this matter? in marketing because the better job you can clean the higher your return on investment is let's say you've got a churn and burn business right now um, you're getting customers in they're booking they're canceling 30 days out so the lifetime value you may spend 200 bucks to get that one recurring customer well you only made 200 bucks on them over 30 days so, so you're making zero, you're not making any money on this. But if they're a customer for a year, two years, some are three years that I've even heard um, with some cleaning businesses, I mean, now you've spent that 200 bucks to retain that customer and you know they're closer to, to worth $10,000 with you. So do you see how the return on, on the investment is better, the better quality service that you offer? It's really one and the same. And that's that's kind of why I like marketing for cleaning business owners is because I can get so deep into the business and I can understand the true pain points and, and how to leverage the marketing aspect in the business. Uh, and it's why I chose to focus on it. And again, I, I like to break this down in one time, move in, move outs and recurring. We talked about that. You know, one thing I'm not going to get big into, and I do just want to mention this, track your attrition rate for your clients and your employees. If I, I want to say the benchmark for attrition is like 5% a month. Um, so you shouldn't be losing more than 5% of your client base each month. Retaining both is key to success and will help you have a better ROI in your marketing dollars as, as I have. Uh, have uh, mentioned previously. So you now know, have a set budget and spend that budget. You know that your budget should be a percentage of revenue and you should spend that every month regardless. Whether it's just branding on Facebook or lead generation on AdWords or SEO, um, you know that branding is just as important as lead generation. So I'm going to give an example of this. Let's say we have an AdWords campaign and you were spending $5,000 a month and it's only generating $10,000 a month for you. Um, you got a 50% gross margin, so you're making zero. You're getting new customers, but in theory, you're not making any money, right? Well, well that's wrong because if you weren't advertising and you weren't spending that money, you wouldn't have all those customers that are new and your amazing service wouldn't be able to win them over to get them into recurring and those one-time cleans and move outs because you're doing so well wouldn't be able to buy from you more so if you take the mindset of ah it just doesn't work um you know i, I can't get an roi on my marketing dollar you're not understanding the brand value 
And then you're you're also probably not paying attention to the lifetime value of that customer and, and being able to upsell to them and get them in your pipeline and turn them into a recurring customer because we need 300 to hit that million. So 600 to hit 2 million if that's what your goal is. Um, so now you know how to target the number for your ideal prospects in your market. That's 10%. So whatever your whatever your uh, population is for your given cities, 10% of those are going to use a cleaning service. Now, there are somewhat exceptions to that rule because um, you can be in a denser populated area that has a uh, higher revenue. So that, that percentage is probably closer to 20 to 30% of that base. And, and I've even seen numbers as high as uh, over the next 10 years that possibly 80% of everybody, every household could be using a cleaning service. And, and, and if you know today's grind, you know, you've got mom working, you've got dad working, or you've got dad working 100 hours a week, and you've got mom taking care of the kids. This, you know, time is, is becoming shorter. So the need for the cleaning services are becoming greater. And, and, you know, let's just face it, people, a lot of people just don't like to clean anymore. It's kind of like a dying thing. Okay. Uh, you, mindset number five, your KPIs capturing market share. So now you know that you got 1,600 potential clients in your hypothetical market. Um, how do you get your brand out there to all of them? Especially now you've got to trump your competition because they're trying to do the same thing. You know, Molly Maids and Mary Maids, they're out there. Every damn market. I don't think I've seen a market they're not. Uh, the simple answer is to be everywhere you can possibly afford to be. Be everywhere you can afford to be. If your budget is seven grand a month, spend every damn nickel on it and be everywhere you, afford, you can afford to be. Now, spend the greatest amount of that budget that produces the greatest amount of revenue and brand awareness at the, at the same time. And I'm going to go over the top four anyways. So th this is somewhat new. Uh, if you're new to the cleaning industry and you're just, you don't even know where to begin with lead generation, this is a great thing. I, I you know, I don't make anything off of this. And, and I'm okay with that because it's a great thing for local businesses. What Google did with Google local ads is they saw that Angie's List and they saw that Thumbtack and Home Advisor were doing lead generation. Guess what they were doing? They were running Google paid ads. They were building their brand and you were paying them to build their brand. Yeah, you got the leads. You and three other companies got the leads and you had to chase them down. And, and you know, sometimes some people got really good at that and, and had high closing percentages to where it worked. But the one thing you lose when you do uh, lead gen through companies like that is, is the branding aspect because it's not your website they're going to. It's not your name they're seeing in the ads. They're not experiencing your company's sales process. They're, they're literally coming in through a third party who's spitting it out to everybody. So you're losing some of that brand awareness there. So use it for what it is. Um, Google ad, local ads, what I, what I didn't put in here, it has a 100% conversion rate and a 50% closing rate from what I hear out there. <clears throat> this is strictly for lead generation. Um, because of the high conversion rate, you can set this up yourself without paying a marketer. So you go apply to be, um, apply to have your business on Google local ads. You go through the vetting process. It takes us 35, 45 days to, to set a customer up to, typically on this. Um, but that's just really customers that don't want to deal with it. So you guys Google local ads. You can Google that. Go to the website, fill out the form. What it is, is you pay them per lead and it's between 18 and 23 bucks, I believe right now for most markets. So a lead is somebody who calls you. So, you know, you're, you're converting at a hundred percent because you're only paying for people that actually reach out to you. 
Um, but your closing rate seems to be about 50% on that from what I'm seeing. Now, some may have higher, but from the clients that we have, uh, this is the feedback that we've got from them. It's about 50%. So, so you're getting a great return on your investment, but you're losing some of that brand. Um, you know, the true story. I've had some clients tell me that when they clean, the client doesn't even know who they hired. So they're just a cleaning company is coming tomorrow that they trusted. And, and Google kind of takes some of your brand away because, again, it, it takes you through their process and they don't even go to your website um, and fill out your, you know, contact form. Um, but again, with such a high closing rate, this is a no-brainer for lead generation. And if you're, especially if you're just starting out, this is where I would put 100% of my budget. Get to a, an acceptable number, 20, 30,000 a month. And now you have a larger advertising budget. And now you can start working on your brand. So that goes to number two, Google AdWords. Uh, we've all heard this before, um, you know, some people, they don't want to use Google AdWords. Some people don't care about the brand awareness for some reason. Um, with our campaigns, you have about a 20% conversion rate and about a 30% closing rate. So Google Ads is different than local ads. If you type cleaning service near me, you've got little boxes up at the top. Those are the Google local ads. And then right below it has... Um, your website link and then your ad copy, those are Google ads. Uh, Google ads for us, we, you know, we have it figured out. So like, you know, it's, it's a simple system. We, we get a customer on in 15 days, your ads are up and running and you're getting phone calls and leads. Uh, there is absolutely no quicker way to build your brand and get lead generation at the same time than Google ads. If you started a company 10 days ago, well, we can have a campaign up in 15 days. So in 25 days, you can start generating leads for your business right away and building the brand at the same time. Um, most our customers see a return on investment on this. And again, some, sometimes we struggle in smaller markets just because the volume's not there. Um, you know, maybe people are more picky about who they use because they know of a company out there or... You know, it, it, it's hard to say, um, you know, in, in, in mega markets like L.A., Houston, I mean, you know, the, these things just they they work so well out of the gate. I mean, sometimes our conversion rates high as 40 and 50 percent. But I'm going to say on average, the conversion rate. So this is how many leads come in through those ads? 20 percent. And you will close really between 20 and 40 percent, but on average, 30. So. The pros, if you're working with the right company, this is a quick win for lead generation. And again, you have to be working with the right company. Somebody that knows their numbers, that knows the industry, that knows the market. I, I've talked to, to, man, probably hundreds of cleaning businesses out there that were paying people for Google ads and they didn't even know how many leads they were getting. I don't know. I pay them 500 bucks. I don't, I don't know what I'm getting, you know, like, Okay, great. Well, at least we know that you're branding your business, but you you can really squeeze some leads out of there. So if it's not done right, um, you could be hurting yourself. There's a lot of opportunity there. So, you know, if you're dealing with a marketing company and doing Google ads, set up some metrics that you have to achieve based on the numbers that I'm giving you today. If you're, if you're, Cost per acquisition for a reoccurring customer needs to be 250 bucks. Tell them that and have them measure that for you. If it needs to be 500, tell them that and measure that for you and make sure you're getting that. So if you're not, you know, feel free to reach out to me. We'll do a market evaluation for free. That's not a big deal. Uh, we do them all the time. Uh, the cons for, for Google AdWords... It, there's almost none, really. Um, it's very complex if you're trying to do it yourself. Um, that's really the only con that I can think of. So if you're just starting up and you have a budget of, you know, 580 bucks a month and you're trying to dump 500 in Google AdWords, the chances are most of that will go to branding 
and very little will go to lead generation just because of how complex it is to set up. And that, again, that's also why you want to pick the right marketing company. Okay. So the top two, um, Google local, easy win, low on branding, high on lead generation, Google AdWords, great on branding, great on lead generation, Google maps. You know, if you can get ranked there, this is a freaking amazing source of leads. This is that three pack that you show that shows up. Um, the customers that we have out of about 55, 60 customers that are ranking there, 70% of their traffic comes from Google Maps. So this is a huge number. 70% of all their traffic is coming from Google Maps. And, and we track phone calls. Um, we track form fills, uh, site visitors, the sources, all this stuff. So, so we have a lot of this data on, you know, hundreds of cleaning businesses. Uh, the cons, it can be complicated to get yours to show in the three pack. Uh, it takes a massive amount of on page and citation work um, in medium and larger markets. Smaller markets, sometimes you get lucky, you just poof, you're there. And I'm here to tell you, it's not just reviews. I've got, I've got friends, uh, other SEOs that have 50, 60 reviews and they're not in the three pack and where they're, the competition has two or three. So there's a lot of things behind the scenes and, and that's what we do with SEO, right? We, we reverse engineer Google, figure out what works and get you to rank there. So Google Maps has to be a priority in your SEO. If you're dealing with an SEO that isn't ranking you in Google Maps, fire them and find somebody who is. Because as you can see here, Google Maps will be 70% of your organic traffic. <clears throat> So below Google Maps, Google Organic is 30%. It's about where 30% of your traffic comes from. Everybody's got to have a website and you can start with something basic. Um, but the most loyal clients find you via organic search. Uh, you get the highest conversion rates. I have websites that are converting at 35% on their organic. Um, and when I say organic, I'm, I'm talking maps and organic together because they're really one and the same, even though they're, they have two different spots on the homepage of Google. Uh, and the cons, it's similar to Google My Business, where it takes a lot of content, on-page SEO and backlinks to get you ranked to the top. And you really need to be in the top three positions, like number six, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, the numbers are huge from number one, number two, and number three in the drops of amount of traffic that you get. So you, you really want that number one spot. And, you know, we've worked with clients that went from nowhere to the first page, but it took us two and a half years to get to that number one spot and beat out Yelp. Uh, you know, it just takes a lot of consistent work. It really does. And that's why SEO should be a part of your marketing budget if you can afford it. And then others, um, you know, being it's free, they have very little market share. So absolutely, you should be using it. Uh, Yelp, you know, the I, in some cases, Yelp has been a game changer for a lot of companies. Um, I know they've updated their algorithms quite a bit and they keep updating them to kind of spread out the market share. Um, I talked to a lot of customers that were generating 50, 60 leads a month from Yelp. This is non-paid. This is just because they have a ton of reviews and that thinned out to like 20 to 30. And what it looked like to us when we kind of reverse engineered what they did is they were spreading that market instead of two or three customers that were getting the majority of the leads. They wanted six to 10 customers to split the leads between them so that they would start spending advertising dollars with them. And it makes perfect sense for them. You know, Google does the same thing. You can't blame them. Uh, Facebook. Facebook is a great place to brand and collect market share. You can do simple things like, hey, download our quick ebook on uh, how to, um, you know, uh, quick, quick tips to clean for your move in, move out and target realtors and target people who are just moving in. Um, or you can do, uh, you know, family uh, case studies, um, how this family saved X amount of time. 
and, and just collect emails. Um, but it, it's good to be out there because how are people going to know that you exist if they can't see your business? And again, this, this is what we're talking about, the branding aspect of this. Um, Facebook lead generation is difficult. It takes really um, steep offers because the intent of the search, you know, somebody's just on their Facebook and they're like, oh, cleaning company. Oh, wow, 50% off. Okay, well, let's try it now. You know, is that, is that really the kind of customer that you want? Um, with, uh, with Google Ads, they're looking for a cleaning service. They're not just randomly falling across, across your business. So the, the intent of the user is way higher there. And the same with organic and Facebook again, uh, until it becomes a more powerful search engine, uh, that part is really just paid ads are just for branding and building your markets just for branding. I've got a customer that spent uh, $25,000 on Facebook likes over the last five years. $25,000. But he's got about $5,000 or he's got about 5,000 followers and his brand's powerful. People know his business. So... Um, if people are still saying no nah, on Facebook likes, uh, I'm telling you, anytime you can touch a customer, it's important to your It's important to your company and build your brand. Uh, same with Instagram. They're kind of, you know, Facebook, you can add some content. You can add links and redirects. Instagram kind of strips it all down and dummies it down to, to videos and photos. And that's really it. So you got to be creative. You got to get some kind of branding package, find some guy on Fiverr or maybe your marketing company as a graphic designer like we do and, uh, you know, have them do do some images for you or, you know, if your cleaners are cleaning, have them snap some before and after pictures and post them up there. You know, it's, it's just important to be there because a small percentage of that market share is there. And then if if you don't have the budget, and you really need to hustle and squeeze every nickel out of it. So you're in the early stages of your business, Thumbtack, Angelus, Home Advisor, and, you know, go for it. If you've done Google local ads and you, you haven't been able to build the budget up to pay somebody to run AdWords and to do SEO, you're doing something wrong. You're going to have to fix your business. Um, so you will almost never see me recommend Thumbtack, Angie's List, or Home Advisor. Almost never. Um, I've got a customer, well, not necessarily a customer, somebody who I've talked with here locally in Michigan. And, you know, she was in the beginning stages and she's been cleaning forever. You know, I told her to sign up for Google Local. And in after 45 days, she did 30 grand a month. So she went from like five, 10 ish to 30 grand in a month and a half. Um, just to show you the power of the lead generation from that. So again, uh, Google local ads is pretty much a thumbtack Angie's list and home advisor killer. It's getting them out of the game. They're going to suffer the more awareness that comes out about Google local, the less, the less relevant they become in the industry. Um, So I get it. You need thumbtacks, Angie's List, if you don't have a brand and you need to watch every penny. Um, but Google local ads really solves that huge problem from the customer of having to chase several leads at a time or get several quotes at a time. These guys are getting one quote and they're usually booking with such a high conversion rate. Again, it's just, that's just like a no brainer. Um, and again, the more your competition is doing lead generation and branding, the more you are going to have to do this. So if you're spending 5,000 a month in marketing and your ads are only running Monday through Friday during business hours and your customers ads are running 24 hours and on the weekends, maybe it's time to allocate some of that budget and increase that ad spend in your ads, just like they're doing. All right. Now this is, this is a, this is a sensitive subject for me. Mindset number six, your leads. 
Leads are worth something. Think back to the branding and market share I mentioned before. If you had an email name and phone number to all 1600 people or of those customers, how much more of your marketing budget could you spend on branding? I mean, you've, you've already got all their information. So, so now all you got to do is target them, right? I mean, just, just think about how that would be. Now, that's not realistic, but think of it, you know, so that concept just shows that power of lead generation and getting leads and getting those emails. So if you have 1,600 people and you got a lead today, now you got 1,599. Get a lead tomorrow, now you got 1,598. And you're just chugging away at that market share. You're, you're getting this contact information for the people in your market. People call it building a list in marketing. It is not building a list. It's building a database. If all the lights went off in the world and Google shut down, there is no Google tomorrow, you have a database of people you can market to that you can pull up because you've spent thousands of dollars trying to get that data. So lead forms, maybe maybe you called three times, a guy never answered. Maybe you texted him, he never replied. Uh, and, and who knows what happened? Maybe he was never really interested to begin with, but he just randomly filled out that form. You've got his email. You can You can stay in touch with him until he tells you to bug off. And that's exactly what you should do. You're maintaining your database. Your database is worth something. Your database should be on your balance sheet. So you spent money on getting that customer's info. That's valuable. That has an expense. That customer cost me 20 bucks. You have 2,000 customers. That's 2,000 times 20. That's how much it costs you to get your database. That's what goes on your balance sheet. And then it allows you to keep in front of them building your brand. So they, they touched you, you know, some, some estimates say you have to touch people up to eight times now before they begin to know, like, and trust you. Um, you know, I've heard six too, but, but whatever, really the point of the matter is keep reaching out until they tell you to stop reaching out. When they unsubscribe that, that means they're tired of hearing from you. When they tell you, I don't call me again. That's when they're done hearing from you. And that's when you wipe them out of the database. Keep building that database. And that's, again, with multi-touch marketing, your leads will increase brand awareness and increase the number of month monthly searches for your brand, which is the highest converting keyword. So when somebody goes into Google and they type in yourcleaningcompany.com for Google Ads, for local, um, for... Uh, organic, you'll see the highest converting uh, conversion rate for that term. Some brands have a monthly search. Some of our customers have monthly search volume of 800. So there's 800 people typing their name in Google every month. They already know, like, and trust them. They're looking for their services in that branding not the lead gener not necessarily the lead generation, though it is part of it, but the branding aspect has built that awareness and why they're typing it in. And that's where you get your highest conversion rate from. Say uh, mindset number seven, your sales. Uh, I can't again, you know, with the lead generation a lot of people just don't see value in it because they don't understand branding and they don't understand marketing. They just know I want more sales. That's it. I just want more sales. They don't understand. It takes years to do this. It takes years to build a brand. It takes years to create lead generation. Well, sales is very much part of your business, whether you want to believe it or not. And it's just as important as training those technicians to do a quality job because the better you are at sales, the more converting you will be on the traffic that's coming to you, the faster you will build your brand, the faster you will grow revenue, the more you need to hire and train. It, it's part of the system. And, and in fact, for your business, it's the front end of the system. So I don't see a lot 
or I do see a lot of companies uh, when they start out marketing, they don't have a system. They don't even understand that they need a system. And it's crazy to say that, but it's true. Um, it's a process, just like your policies and procedures manual. When I owned my maid service, I had my policies and procedures manual up 24 seven. And the second I ran into a situation where I didn't have something documented, whether it was under employees or whether it was under customers or whether it was under the kind of services that we delivered. Whenever a situation came up and I didn't have it documented, okay, ma'am, yep, you know, I deal with it. I, I hang up the phone and then I go into my policies and procedures manual, update it, send a new one to the cleaning techs. Hey guys, here's the couple things that I updated. Please read through these, make sure you understand it. It's the exact same way with sales. This is not an afterthought. It is so important to your business. Um, you know, have a basic sales script. Always add questions that the clients are, are giving you over the phone and then how you should answer them. <clears throat> In your business, you want freedom. 99% um, of business owners, that's what they want. They, and that's why they work for themselves. Uh, they feel like they can put in the time and energy to make make it work in their business and so that they could have family time and quality time in life and then maybe eventually sell. So imagine if you had a sales script already worked out through the hundreds of leads that you've generated in your business where, where you feel like you're at a comfortable conversion rate. I'm, I'm converting maybe a total of 30% of all customers with this script and you, and you can live with that because it works with your numbers. Imagine if you were to step aside and hire somebody to take that position over without having that. You're going to start all over again. You're you're starting from day one again and you're just, ah, you know, let, let them take the call. Let them, let them book the jobs. At that point, you're only taking in the low hanging fruit that is going to book with you anyway. You're not making any effort to build your company beyond that. So it's, it's very, very important to have a sales script. Here's another one. A lot of people totally miss this aspect of their business. Have a CRM, a powerful CRM, not just something that kind of does CRM stuff. This is outside your scheduling software. Cause I, you know, no offense Mark, but uh, I have yet to see a, made service that has a CRM that really needs what you need in the sales process. And, you know, Amar and I talk all the time and I'm always like, Hey man, we need to add this. We need to add that. We, we need to see this, you know, the, you know, we're always going back and forth. So, you know, that that's the one thing I can say about Zenmade is their feedback is they, they take it and they run with it. So kudos to them for that. And then again, not every software wants to be a CRM. Maybe they just want to be a made service scheduling software that solves the majority of those problems. And, and that's what I found it. And, and that's why you're kind of segmented with a lot of pieces of software, because some of these software are very good at one thing and not the other. So you, you end up using QuickBooks online for your accounting. You end up using ZenMade for your scheduling. Um, you know, uh, now you've got a CRM that you need. So now you've got that. Um, then you got a support desk system that has a shared inbox, you know. So so there could be a ton of different like little pieces of, of software. The the point is is to make sure that you have your fun your foundations down. So HubSpot has a free version that is better than most paid CRMs out there. So sign up. You need this now, not later. Uh, pipe drive. I don't know if you've heard of this or not, but it's a sales CRM and it gives you like, you can create sales processes like lead in quote, given customer declined customer need to follow up closed lost. So you have this process of the, the buyer cycle through the sales cycle that you can follow. Pipedrive does one thing. That's what it does, really. Uh, HubSpot does that. Um, HubSpot does uh, ticketing. 
So uh, it does a shared inbox. So your whole team could be in there. And this, again, this is just under the free version. I think it covers up to 2,000 emails a month and 20,000 contacts. I don't remember. You'll have to look at it. But but even the paid version is worth it because it's going to pay for itself uh, eventually. You know, it all just depends on your business and where you're at with the volume. But um, so in the CRM is this database for your customer. This is where your customer lives, eats, and breathes. You can connect your phone system up so when they call, boom, it just pops right in the CRM and you see it right there. You can pull that customer up and start making your notes. Maybe they want to cancel a cleaning and maybe the person on the phone can't do that, but the person in charge of scheduling can. So you just go in there, create a ticket, assign the ticket to your scheduler. The scheduler goes in, sees the ticket assigned, closes it out. We're done. We put them back in an email drip and we move on. I mean, all that all this can be done in, in HubSpot for free. So, so please do this. Track your closing percentages by source. Google paid, Google organic, uh, whatever, whatever the source is. And track it by salesperson. So salesperson A, salesperson B. If salesperson B has an off day and you see their closing rates 10%, how long do you think after you've worked so hard at building your systems, you can sustain that? And at what point do you make that decision, whether you, whether this is good or bad for your business, if you don't know that number, I'm paying, I know I'm paying Ray 1500 a month for AdWords and I'm not seeing crap from it. Well, do you know what you're closing by sources? Do you know, do you know what your salesperson is doing? And if you don't, the problem isn't the marketing. The problem is the salesperson. So again, sales is not an afterthought. It's extremely important and you have to be on this. All right. So in summary, if I've done my job right, you know how many people are looking for your cleaning service in a given market. How much to dedicate to capturing that market share each month. And again, remember, this could take years to do. Um, 10, 15 years could be, uh, depending on what you're doing and how much you're dedicating to it. What sources to advertise and to spend that budget on in order of importance. Google Local, Google Ads, SEO. What KPIs to track for sales and retention. So, you know, I gave you the closing percentages that you want to achieve. Make sure you're achieving those. Maybe your market's lower per chance. You know, again, these numbers are on average, so it's a good base to start with. But your numbers are your numbers. I mean, you could find some secret sauce out there that you're closing at 80%. Well, don't, don't tell anybody. Keep that. Franchise that. Build that brand. Build that asset. Because that's what you're trying to do. Whether you're trying to get freedom or eventually sell. You're, you're building that asset on your balance sheet. And now you know how important sales are and how important to achieve those goals through sales. So what's next? What do you do from here? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have this downloadable. You can go through it. Um, read the whole thing. Take notes, please. But what, what, what I want you to do is... I don't, I don't care if you're spending 10 grand a month already and you've been doing it for 10 years. I, I really don't care. What I want you to do is I want you to take this and reevaluate everything and make sure those numbers make sense for your business and make sure you're hitting these goals and make sure you're implementing the right systems to track these things. I know it's a lot of work, guys, but we signed up for this. We wanted to be business owners, so this is what we have to do. Um, if you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to PM, PM me on Facebook. I'll do my best. Um, you can fill out the web the web chat form on our site. Uh, I'll do what I can to answer your questions. And, and maybe I'll do a follow-up to this. So if I get enough of the same questions, um, maybe I'll, I'll kind of dive in deeper to maybe specific subjects or, or show you tangible um markets, you know, whatever it may be. But now you can run your numbers, get a game in place and dominate your market. So get that budget, find a good marketing partner, 
set KPIs, and then go out there and kick some ass and grow your business and your brand. You know, I want to see all you guys succeed out there. And, you know, lastly, I, I want to thank Amar and the team for putting this unprecedented made summit together. I think this is freaking awesome. I'm super happy that it, they allowed me to be part of this and that I was able to give what I've learned over the past seven years and beyond uh, in my business. And I, and I truly hope this helps you guys, you know, so get out there, kick some butt and thank you guys very much.